Yeah, all right, all right, all right. Settle down. Just had literally come in today, some Lartisan, some more Lartisan here. These are from a few days ago. We're going to open these up together. Let's go outside, do the weather check. So come on in, take your shoes off. Don't touch anything. Don't break anything. Don't smell anything. Get comfortable. Let's do this. And yes, it is absolutely brilliant outside. And it's not too hot. It's just actually perfect. I wish it was like this every day, all year round. I would be a happy mofo, but no, no clouds, just no stickiness, no sweaty balls. Everything's just perfect. But um, I've got my scent of the day here. I'm going to share with you. And I want to declare my love for this perfume. It's going to be a shocker for a lot of you considering the thrashing I put it through in my review video. But I'll be the first to admit when I'm wrong. And I was definitely wrong about music for a while. I uh, found it overbearingly sweet and all I could really pick up were those sweet pineapple and caramel notes. But within time, I've really come to appreciate this. And um, it's really a lot of notes that I really appreciate, specifically lavender and patchouli. And there's there's my friend again. He's... I know you're watching me. I know you're stalking me. Hi, Chad. Come for coffee. Don't be shy. You know where I am. You've been here before. Bye, Chad. But yeah, I love the notes of lavender and patchouli. Um, I love the dryness, the earthiness, the scratchiness of all those combined and the pineapple really plays a huge role in this and, and kind of combining everything. So it's really a sparkling, a sparkling pineapple. I don't, I don't find it very juicy. Yeah, it's fruity, but it's not juicy, like juicy, fruity, goofy, if you kind of know what I mean. It's, it's fruity, but it's restrained and it's sparkling and smoky, not to confuse it with that other pineapple fragrance that people go bananas over. It smells absolutely nothing like that. Although it is a bit leathery, I find that the, 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 um, the pineapple here is a bit smoky, incensey, leathery, and uh, it just contrasts so beautifully against those harsher, uh, earthier notes, the the floral lavender and the earthy patchouli, and um, I'd I'd consider this normally just looking at the note breakdown of lavender patchouli labdanum, almost a fougere, and uh, this doesn't come off as a fougere. It's more of an oriental without really being. It's I don't know. It's kind of a mix of both, really. I wouldn't call it a more of a fougere, more of an oriental, really. It's kind of like a, a lost genre or something in between. But um, I've just grown to absolutely love this. And I find it really warm and cozy and comfortable, almost like a well-fitted favorite sweater and very versatile, something I could wear in all four seasons. Probably not the most humidest of days, but... I've just actually noticed this today while checking out the bottle. This is not an eau de parfum or an eau de toilette. This is pure, pure parfum, pure parfum extrait. And I'm not surprised because it lasts all day. I can smell it literally with every single breath I take. But music for a while. I love you madly. I love that pineapple. I love that caramel in the dry down um I, I was gonna say this 
could almost be like the masculine version of Mont Guerlain. If you like that, I would check this out or not even the masculine version, maybe almost the niche version of Mont Guerlain. I love Mont Guerlain for its, its caramel and um, vanilla lavender accord, but this is on a completely different level. So there you go. Frederick Mull music for a while. But I have been talking about it quite a bit recently, so let's go in. Let's check some things out over here. So I'm going to open these up. I've purchased a lot of these lately. I'm not sure what's gotten into me, but let me flip this camera around. All right, back again. So I picked up 12 Lartisans last week, 13 perfumes in general. And I'll be honest, I'm a little bit disappointed in myself after going about two and a half months without making a fragrance purchase to just kind of splurge like this. And I know it wasn't out of the blue. I'm going to blame the media on this. This is not my fault at all. Um, I don't usually watch the news, but it's been really hard to avoid it with all that's been going on lately with the isolation, with... Um, the protesting and looting and rioting and you know all that stuff so it kind of took me out of my routine of meditating and reading and exercising and just you know going for walks through nature and um without that i've just i don't know i don't feel right and i was looking for for things outside of me to fulfill me you know, that's where the addiction aspect kicks in. And I know a lot of people do like when I talk about the addiction part, which I have no problem with. I'm pretty transparent when it comes to that. Some people don't. I know it triggers them, but um, just play along. So I've got four here. We're going to open these together. These are all blind buys for me, but I got to warn you. Um, Lardizan is not a particularly safe house to be blind buying. And just because I like something, it doesn't mean you necessarily will. So I, I really don't recommend buying these until you smell them. Because I absolutely don't love all that I've purchased so far. I really struggled with Zonka. Is that how you say it? Zonka? Um, didn't understand it at all. I thought it was going to be something I loved. I loved the note breakdown of it, of iris, leather, incense that sort of thing but it was just really weird it was a weird perfume for me to comprehend and i i have read a, a bunch of other reviews of it and they were mostly glowingly positive but i read a few uh saying it took some people you know uh multiple wearings to truly understand it and that just might be the case for me but as far as right now, it's not something that I love or I would even recommend, but it was just really weird for me. So these, all four of these are the older packaging and I've got more Exquis here, Exquis. And this is Seville Lob, Seville, Seville Olob. All right, let's open Noir Squeeze. I think these are both Bertrand du Chiffre. And Noir Squeeze is, love the sound of that, fresh, cello. Um, Noir Squeeze is supposed to be a gourmand from what I understand. Hopefully it's not too sweet. Knowing Bertrand, I'm sure it's going to be um, dosed properly. Put these on a blotter. Oh, right away, it's really dark. It's sweet and it's incensey. I, I can pick up the frankincense immediately. But I like this. Yes, it's sweet, but it's not gross sweet 
it feels almost grainy. I can feel texture in here. Is it patchouli? Something almost cacao-ish, patchouli. Something nutty. But I mostly see brown so far. And it, actually it's really dark, almost like a burnt, something charred. Smoky. I think this is a winner. I do like this. This is like a, a smoky, almost charred sugar without being like sucrose -y sweet. Something, some baked goods that's actually in the oven and it's it's been overcooked. I like this so far. Work squee. All right. Exquise. Let's open Seville Olab. You know, it's it's weird for a a brand as old as Lardizan to be almost like under under the radar. They don't get a whole lot of attention, um, mostly from pure fragrance enthusiasts. But most people nowadays, when they think of niche. It's all very safe. It's all very mass appealing. You know, it's like one level up from designer, but over really expensive and comes in fancy packaging, which Lardizan is neither. It doesn't have fancy packaging and it's not expensive. It's actually very affordable for what you're getting and for the perfumers that they're working with. But I love this color. Look at that orange, almost like a apricotty orange. I was gonna say um, cognac, but cognac's much darker than this. All right, so this is blind. I've never smelled this. Oh, it's definitely orange. Uh, it's got a little bit of greenish, neroli, pettit grain. Nice. So this is, I don't quite get orange blossom, but this is very in that neroli-ish family. A little bit of green branches and um, leaves. Some soapiness. Typically neroli is usually soapy. Very nice. This is nice and fresh. This is going to be perfect for summertime. A little bit musky. It's very pleasing. It's very pleasant. It smells very natural to me, like walking underneath a an orange tree. I don't get the orange blossom, though. I'm not sure if orange blossom is supposed to be in here, but I don't get any. I get mostly neroli and pettit grain, but it's nice. And, and a little bit of greenness, I like that for a fresh scent. All right, I got some things here. These are from Maximum Fragrance. Uh, for my US viewers, if they are, they don't, they're not shipping to the US yet, but if there's something that you want, private message Sam and he'll, he'll work with you. So these, Neither of these came celloed. I don't know why, but these are both blind for me as well. And I've got Marchand Loop and Faux de Absinthe. And after this, I've got three more Lardizans coming in. I think I'm going to be done uh, with my Lardizan. I mean, there's so many of them that get a lot of positive reviews, but I'm not sure that I need um, Premier figue the fig which is i'm guessing similar to philosophicals which i already own um murat musk i'm not sure if i need murat musk if i'd smell it maybe i would purchase it but yeah Monchant loop really nice green color they got beautiful colors love that 
nice contrast. It's almost like a lime green. So right away, I'm going to picture something green in this fragrance. Oh, wow, this is weird. So it feels very retro to me. Spicy, woody, dry. I, I really can't pick up any notes. I almost feel like there's something, I feel like it's masculine, woody, it's very woody, mossy, it's definitely green, like being out in the woods, but there's some weird spices to this that I'm not familiar with. Maybe like a basil or something. Interesting, but this feels more masculine, woody. Fresh, there's a freshness to this, almost like something you'd find out in the woods. I bet you there's moss in there. Um, I'm not sure that I like it. I don't know, I, I'll have to wear it. Let's go with faux. Absent. All right, and there is faux absent. And this one is almost clear. It's got a, a very light tinge of green to this. Absent. I don't have a whole lot of uh, experience with absent. All right, this is. much different. So it's green, woody, spicy, dry. I think there's some vanilla in the base of this. Peppery. Oh wow, it's completely different on skin. It's almost leathery. I like this much better than than uh, Monchant Lube. This is definitely more woody, warm, inviting. Way more masculine, way more spicy. This feels retro to me. Almost well, something like a dapper father or dapper dad would wear. I can't make out a genre though for either of these. They're both kind of, they're interesting. This is niche, you know, this isn't mass appealing or it's definitely, they're both weird. This one's more weird, Monchant Lou. It's almost like rotting compost, something fermenting and dry and... Oh, I'm not sure if I like this. Mossy, green. Sp weird spices in here. I like faux a little bit better, but they're both weird. This is what I mean. Don't blind buy these. They are, um, they're strange to say the least. There's some good ones, but, um, I'll round these, I'll round this lineup when, when I'm more familiar with them and I will get back to you, but let me know if you're familiar with any of these, um, Faux Absinthe, Monchant Loop, we've got Noir Exquise and Seville Alab. So 
uh, yeah, drop a comment down below. Love reading your comments. Always appreciate. I, I, I see you guys. I hear you guys. I do appreciate all the comments, all the likes, and um, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.